Hello everyone and welcome to a practice playthrough of the board game I'm designing called Hideous Madness. It is a game where you play as a uh, cultist of Cthulhu and you're trying to summon Cthulhu by bringing three relics and the Necronomicon from hidden over here and you're trying to bring it to the ritual site which is over here where you begin the game. Uh, throughout the game there will be investigators that pop up in these locations and they will try to uh, attack you and defeat you and defeat your uh, cultist zealots and they're going to try to get into the ritual site and if one of them does you lose. Uh, also if that deck runs out which is the investigator deck you also lose. Uh, so let's begin the game. Uh, we Again we start over here every round we gain two power which will be illustrated by this 20-sided uh, die. Uh, we'll only gain up to uh, six power uh, as a max. We won't go above that. But we start with three because uh, whenever you're at the ritual site, you can gain one extra power or draw a card. I usually like to start off with one extra power. And we start the game off with four cards in our hand. So we have here a dagger. We can attach it to a zealot or ourself and it uh, gives us plus one strength. Uh, and then uh, uh, either us, the cultists, or a zealot, which is a type of ally, we can have up to two daggers at a time, so that'll give us plus two strength total if you have two, one for each dagger. Uh, we have a red herring. Uh, by the way, the dagger costs one to play. Red herring costs one to play. Uh, we place a uh, red herring token in any location, and all adjacent um, in, uh, investigators uh, in, that are in adjacent locations, move and stay there for two turns. And you can see I've been doing playthroughs here to, um, so I've, I've made a lot of revisions. This is the first time I'm playing on camera, uh, but I've done a lot of play testing before this point. And you see I've, I've done a lot of revisions already. All right, Bewitch uh, cost three to play. Uh, two uh, investigators at the same location defeat each other. And this is at range one to two. This is at range two to three. And then Curse costs one to play. Uh, we can do two damage at a range of zero to one. You see here, I used to be, you defeat one investigator or inspector, and I changed the name, uh, but now I have it so you do two damage um, to one location at range zero to one. So there you go, so let's begin. <clears throat> so we wanna go over here to get, get to these locations and flip over these tokens, because there's gonna be uh, we want to get the three relics that are hidden, but I don't know where they are. I randomly placed them throughout these areas. Uh, those tokens are just there uh, on standby. Those are like, a, like for example, here are the da the daggers and the um, red herring tokens. And then I have the Necronomicon token here. Those are just off to the side for now. Um, so <clears throat> every turn we have uh, we have four turns, or four. I'm sorry, we have uh, four actions you can do on every turn. So the first action I'm going to do, I'm actually just going to move as far as I can. Um, so I'm going to go, and by the way, every space has something that, that gives, uh, every space has like a bonus or an effect. So at the ritual site, throughout the whole game, we can uh, spend one action and one power to summon one of our zealots, one of our fellow cultists. I call them zealots in this game. Uh, to distinguish you, you're, you're the cultists and your followers are the zealots. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to uh, spend one of my four actions and spend a power to summon a zealot. And when you summon a zealot, you can either summon them in your space or in an adjacent space. I'm going to put them at an adjacent space. So that's my first action. Second action, I'm going to move. And uh, I'm also going to move him, so I'll be action number three. Then action number four, I'm going to move again. Okay, so I'm not going to spend anything else. Uh, and by the way, every card I do, that would be another action. Uh, so at the end of uh, my turn, I draw a card from the uh, Investigator deck. And uh, it's already one of the worst ones for me. So uh, we summon the Elder thing, and it defeats all Inspectors and Allies, wherever it is. And I play it to the docks, and with every card from the Inspector deck... Uh, we summon uh, an inspector. Every single card summons at least one inspector. And in this one, it puts it in uh, Arkham City Hall. So let me get the elder thing. This uh, meeple here 
will represent the elder thing, and we play him to the docks. Actually, I'm going to stand him up. And then we play the uh, investigator uh, with this card to Arkham City Hall. And there you see Arkham City Hall, docks, every location has its name. Okay, and you'll see here the Elder thing has six strength. Uh, so I, I, I kind of just keep that in my head and I'll discard the card there. Okay, so uh, normally before I draw a card, I will move whatever enemies are out already. But because there were no enemies, it was the first turn, I just drew the card instead. Okay, so first turn, I think I will attach a dagger uh, to myself. So that's going to cost me, by the way, I start by gaining two power, so I should have four. I'm going to spend one to go back down to three to gain a dagger, which will give me one strength. So I'm going to take a dagger token. So there has a little dagger written on it in pencil. Put it next to my guy. And I'll discard that card to show that I used it. So that's action number one. Action number two, I'm going to move... Uh, actually, instead of the mountains, I'm going to move to the cabin. Because if I move to the mountains, I have to stop. That's one of the um, abilities or effects of the mountain space, is that anything that moves there has, can't move anymore for the remainder of their turn. Uh, the cave that where I just was gives uh, all of the cultists and their allies plus one strength. Same thing for the cabin and the ruins over here. This is the grove, the grotto, and the ritual site. So I'm going to move there, and I'm going to keep moving to the sewers. Now, the good thing about the sewers is that nothing, uh, none of the enemies, like no inspectors on the Elder thing, can move into the sewers. The sewers is like a hiding uh, place, a hideaway, away from the, ri the ritual site. So uh, we're going to go there. That's the special ability of the sewers. Um, so that was, uh, I played a dagger. That was one, two, three. Uh, fourth uh, ability, I'm going to put this guy here to kind of defend this area. He can move quickly to there to defend it. Because <clears throat> again, if any, any enemy enters the ritual site, we lose automatically. Unless someone's there to defend it and kills off whatever goes in there. Okay, so I think that was our fourth move. We put a dagger, so that was one, two, three, and then four. So those are our four abilities. We drop back up to four which is our hand limit. If we have more than four cards, we have to discard down at the end of our turn. So we got <clears throat> the uh, Ritual of Hideous Madness. And that's kind of what this game is, is named after uh, this card. Uh, so you, the way this card works is it costs four to play. And once it's in play, it stays there and I can keep activating it until something makes me discard it. And the way this works is uh, I can do two actions and I can target anything at a range of zero to three, and I can spend X amount of power to do X amount of damage to as many um, uh, targets as I want within that range. So I had to spend four in order to put it there so I can use it later. Okay, so uh, though I, I finished my turn. Let's uh, draw, well, before we draw, we have to move these guys. So normally the, the way the enemies move is they move uh, either closer to you if you're closer, or they move towards the ritual site. Because these guys can't enter the sewers, he's just going to start going towards the ritual site. And same with the elder thing. Okay. So now we draw from the investigator deck. Uh, divine intervention. So it's good that I draw this, drew this now. So uh, shuffle all hideous madness cards back into the cultist deck. Uh, if none, you are defeated. So I actually want to take that off because uh, uh, that was uh, I found that last part to be w uh, way too difficult in the game. So, um, but so if this was out, this would make me discard the uh, ritual of hideous madness. So it's not out, so we don't do that effect. But we add a investigator to the church, and you'll see that uh, throughout this game the investigators really start to pile up. Okay. So, back to our turn. Uh, we are at five power. 
So let's see. I can curse one of these. But I kind of want to move and start searching. Um, I think I'll do that. So I'm going to go. Whoops. That was at uh, five, I think. One, two. So I moved two. I'm going to search here for three. And it's one of the uh, relics. Uh, you'll see that. Um, it's denoted by a uh, little star. So that's one of the relics. So I found the relic. Uh, so I went one, two, searched for uh, my third action. My fourth action is I'm going to attach it to myself. So that was all four actions. Now we'll go to the, um, to the uh, enemy's turn. So he's going to move closer to me. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. One, two. He's going to move closer to me. And he's also going to move closer. You see, now there's two in this one location. Uh, by the way, each yellow investigator has a strength of one. Um, I start out with a strength of two, uh, but the dagger gives me three strength. And each uh, zealot has a strength of one. And then red investigators, which we haven't seen yet, also have strengths of two, base, a base strength of two. The, any, any enemy can also gain more power, except for the um, elder thing. It starts with six, so it can't really get stronger than that. Okay, so now uh, they moved. We have to draw a card from the Investigator deck. And this is one of the uh, uh, red uh, Investigators. You'll see they start with, they used to be three, but I found that was too difficult. So now it's uh, two. So uh, Magician, uh, the Cultist loses all power. So I have, I had five, but now I'm going to put it to zero. And uh, the Magician is played to the theater. And then we put a yellow one at the farms. So you see when we draw a red investigator, we, uh, it, two total investigators are, are played. So uh, the magician, the red one, is going to go to the theater, and the yellow one, the weaker one, is going to go to the farms. So we'll do the weaker one first. He goes to the farms. And then the red one, the magician, goes to the theater. Okay. All right, back to our turn. Uh, we have now uh, two power. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'd like to do Bewitch to get these two to fight each other, but I don't have enough power. Ooh, but I can do... So you see, red herring is good because normally, you know, it costs one and uh, it's two to three range. And usually it just, it just freezes the investigators for two turns to buy me some time, but it also groups them together. So it makes them really strong in that one location. It adds up all their strength, but I can also use it when the elder thing is out in a combo to just use the elder thing to either kill all the investigators, or if there's enough investigators nearby, I can use them to group up and destroy the elder thing. So we'll see if we can do that here. I don't know if I'll have enough power to do that. So what I'll have to do is I'm going to have to move away. So I have two power. I'm going to move away. So that now it's two, because it's a range uh, two to three. So now it's one, two. And I'm going to play the red herring, so I uh, go down to one power. And I put the red herring token here. And then if you see that adjacent um, uh, adjacent location investigators move and stay there for two turns. So they're going to move there. So these two are, are adjacent, so they're going to move there. <laughs> and then they would normally stay there, and I would lay them down to indicate that it's the first turn, stand them up for the second turn, and remove the token. But um, so if we add up their strength, that's one, two, three, four strength. And uh, if you recall, the uh, elder thing is six strength. See, the elder thing is strong enough to defeat all the investigators. And if you read, on, read on, if you remember on the elder thing card, anything that's in the same location as the elder thing, uh, the elder thing destroys. You know, unless everything else adds up to be six or more. So 
I use this red herring to do that kind of combo where I use the elder thing to kill the investigators by putting that red herring there. Wait, that was a... There. Okay, so, uh, so I use that. So that was uh, four damage we did to the elder thing because it was one red investigator, which is two strength, and two yellow investigators, which is one strength each. So that's four strength total, four damage we've done to the elder thing this round. At the end of the round, he'll just go back up to six strength total, health total. Health and strength is the same thing in this game. So uh, right now he has uh, two strength left, and I have three strength total because of the dagger. So now, let's see, I did one, I moved one, I did the red herring for two, and then one, two, I can move there and attack him. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move there and attack him, and that gets rid of the elder thing. Okay. So those were all four of my uh, turns. So normally, uh, when you want to battle something or fight something, it costs an action. But if you end your turn in a space with an enemy, it automatically starts a fight. So that's a way to get a fifth action in there. Uh, okay, so uh, so now we'll do the enemy movement. They're going to move closer to me. We'll draw a card. Uh, the oh we and we forgot to uh, draw our hand back up to four. You see a zealot. We can play zealots from our hand, but the thief. Uh, we play him to the power plant, but we have to discard our entire hand. So I have to discard. Oh, and uh, where it says otherwise play to the location closest to you and discard your hand. Uh, that was the old way I played the game. I found it better to just play them to specific locations. I forgot to scratch that otherwise sentence out. So we're going to play him to the power plant and we're going to play a uh, yellow one to the mines. Okay, so the red one. And in this relic we should have brought with us. So he goes to the power plant. And a yellow one to the mines. Okay. I just noticed you can't really see power plant there. Okay. Okay. So um, back to our turn. Uh, we increase our power by two, so we're at three. We have the dagger and uh, relic with us. So now I don't have any cards in my hand because you draw cards at the end of your turn. So that's how the thief kind of does, it, like hurts you. It, you don't have any cards in your hand now uh, during your turn. So I still have four moves and we're going to move uh, to the sewers as one, to the cabin two, to the ruins three, and to the grove four. So those are our four moves. We'll end the turn there. They'll move one closer to the ritual site. Uh, now we draw our hand. So we have a curse. We already saw what that does. We have two curses. Uh, so we have a zealot. It costs one to play and they have one strength. Uh, when moved, they can move a relic to a new location. So you see, they're kind of like our mini me's. They can get relics. They can search locations, get relics, and even uh, the Necronomicon, and they can move them back to the... Um, the ritual site. Uh, so we did. We know what the curses are. Then the Night Gaunt costs four to play, has four strength, and when you move him, he can move two locations at a time, uh, jumping over because he's gonna like fly over. Uh, so normally, if you wanted to move into a space with an enemy, you have to stop your uh, movement. You can't move anymore. But the Night Gaunt could jump over. He can even jump over the mountains. That requires otherwise otherwise anything to stop. He can jump over that. So that's kind of the good thing about the Night Gaunt. So that's what we have. All right, so that was at the end of our turn. We already uh, moved everyone. So let's do, uh... <clears throat> okay, the Elder Sign. So you uh, you place the Elder Sign with an Investigator and it gives them plus three strength. And you can't win while the Elder Sign is in play. And then we also play a Yellow, one to, a yellow Investigator to the uh, Miskatonic University. So here's the Elder Sign. We're going to give it to this guy because he's the closest. So now he has... Four strength total. He is one plus three, four total. 
uh, and we play a yellow one to the uh, Miskatonic University. Oh, I think we forgot to move this guy. Yeah, so Miskatonic University, oh, and it's red. It's hard to get these out. Okay, so now we have two red ones at Miskatonic University, so that's four strengths total at that location, two of each. So each, each of them has two strengths. So we'll discard the Elder Sign. Now we'll go back to our turn. Uh, we increase our strength uh, by two, or not our strength, our, our uh, power. We'll move to the uh, Ritual Site. So now we have brought our first of three uh, relics to the, um, to the Ritual Site. And now, let's see what we wanna do. I think we'll play the Night Gaunt, so we're gonna go down to uh, one, because it costs four to do that. And uh, here is our, oops, here is our Night Gaunt Mini. And we can, uh, all our allies we can put at our space or an adjacent space. Uh, I'll put him over here. Um, so let's see, so he is a four now, and this is also four. Uh, I forgot to change the text on that to two, two do, dam do two damage. This one should say what this one says, do two damage. Okay. Um, I don't necessarily want the Night Gaunt to be killed just by sending him there, though. That's the thing. So what did I do? I moved once, I played, so I have two more actions. Uh, oh, and you know what? I'm at this space. I'm going to gain a, a, a power because I'm at the ritual site. Um, let's see. If I move here, so that's my third action. Uh, fourth action, I'll play a zealot for one. Oops. Uh-oh. Okay. Now I'm going to put this zealot at the cave here. Okay. So those are my four actions. Okay. Um, now I'll draw back up to four cards. Bewitch and a dagger. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to... Uh, now we'll move these guys. And you know what? I shouldn't have played him here. I should have played him here to protect him. That was dumb. Because he has only two strength, he's four. Now he can kill either of these. Um, he'll go closest to the ritual site. So he's going to just wipe this guy out. That was dumb. I shouldn't have played that guy there. Okay. And this is going to move closer. This guy's will move closer. Now we'll draw from the um, uh, deck. A revolver. So it, the revolver, uh, you place it with a revolver token with an uh, investigator. And it gains plus one strength. And also, we add a yellow guy to the hotel. So we're going to give a revolver to whoever it would make. Uh, uh, we'll add it to the strongest one, which, other than him, because he has the elder sign, you can't add more to him. So we're going to add it to one of the red guys. So now, uh, this guy has three, this guy has two. So five strength total at that location. So we'll get rid of the... Oh, and we need to add a yellow guy to the hotel. So you see the investigators start adding up real quickly if you don't keep them down. Okay. All right, so we're done with the enemy phase. Oh, man. Okay, so we have... So this guy has four strength. We have three, and this has four. Hmm. This guy has two. So what I'll do is I'm going to move this guy here. I'm going to move myself there. And together, I have one are one, two, three, four strength, and it's really five because of that, because uh, the cave gives us, it's really six, because the, uh, the cave gives me plus one strength and the zealot plus one strength. So we have enough to defeat the um, investigator, but he has enough to defeat at least one of us, uh, so he's going to defeat the, uh, the zealot. And we defeat him. And that discards the uh, elder sign. Okay. Oh, we should have gained two, so we have three. Um, so wait, these guys have one, two, three, four, five now, which is bad. 
so I moved him, so that was one, two, and three. So the fight, because it was during my turn, the fight was the third action. So I only have one more action left. Oh, I can use the, if I can get close enough, I can use the be Bewitch action on those two. Um, you know what, I think I'm just going to move him up one, and that'll be the fourth action. We'll, we'll leave it there. Okay, so uh, now we'll move the enemies. Uh, now remember, they can't go into the sewers, so they have to go either this way or this way. Uh, so what's the closest way to us? One, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four, five. So they're going to go this way. And this guy will go here. Now we'll draw a card from the Investigator deck. A new lead. All Investigators move one space closer to the Ritual site. And then we add one to the Power Plant. So uh, he he's going to stay there because they won't move to you until they collect here to gain enough um, uh, Investigators to have enough strength to destroy you. So that, in other words, they won't just go there and commit suicide because they'll just lose. So they build up at a location until they have enough people to in, uh, to invade and, and win. So he's going to go there, or at least defeat some of you. Um, then the, these guys are going to go with their gun here. And then we'll add one to the uh, yellow guy to the power plant. Okay. All right, now back to our turn. Uh, I really want to bewitch range one to two. So we gain two power at five. Uh, I'm going to spend three to bewitch those two. So that'll bring us down to two. So I'm going to use bewitch. They defeat each other. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm going to use, uh, you know, I'm going to move the one. So wait, I bewitch, that's the one first action. I move, that's the second action. Um, so that was one, two, three. And then if you see here, there's an arrow there. That means there's free movement between the sewers and... Uh, Arkham City Hall. So that was, so I, I bewitched, that's one, move two, three, wait a minute, I bewitched, I moved, I moved, so this is a free uh, movement, so I still have one more action left, I have my fourth action still, and I'm going to search Arkham City. Oh, there you go, another um, relic. Okay, well that, that worked out. And then I can move back because of that free, it's a, free, oh no, but I, I need to spend an action to grab it and I don't have it yet. Okay. Uh, which is bad because I forgot. So let me, I'm going to end my turn. Draw. And I don't, I don't have this attached yet. So I have to, I have to spend an action to get it, but I, I ran out of actions. But the bad thing is that City Hall's uh, ability. Uh, so if, if the cultist ends their turn at City Hall, I have to draw an extra investigator card, which is gonna be really bad so let's move the enemies before we draw uh let's see one two three or one two three uh so i think well he's not gonna want to move here so he's gonna go here he's gonna go there towards me and he's gonna go there okay let's see what we get the psychic so uh the psychic makes the cultist discard the top four cards of the cultist deck one two, three, four. Okay, that's good because uh, there's a, whenever we draw the psychic, there's a potential that she can make us discard the Necronomicon, which is really bad because then we got to uh, discard, discard, discard to draw it back up so that we shuffle this back in there. So I'm glad we didn't do that. Uh, they're going to be played, the red one is going to be played to the cemetery, which is over here. And the yellow one is going to be played to the hospital. Uh, 
Okay. All right, uh, back to our turn. Okay, so we are going to attach uh, the relic. We're gonna, oh, and we gain two power. So we have four. As a free movement, we're gonna move from the city, our city hall to the sewers. So that's a free movement. So we still have three more because we, we attach it as one, free movement. Uh, let's see, we want, we need to get it back here. But while I'm here, I'm thinking I might want to get rid of some of these investigators. Okay, let, maybe we can use two of these. So, um, so wait, I, I attached, free movement, right? So I have, I have three more actions because I attached as one, free movement. Yeah, I have three more actions. So I'm going to use both of my curses, which are one each, so I'm down to two power. And I'm going to use them to defeat, um, let's say, uh, this, these two. I'm going to defeat both of these. I, I do two damage with each curse. They're just one uh, strength each, so they're, they're, it's enough to kill both of them. Okay. So I have two daggers. I'm going to discard one dagger. As a uh, discarding is not an action, you can just discard whenever. So that was so I attached, free move, two curses. So I have one action left. I'm going to move to the cabin. Okay, so we'll draw back up to four, and we get the Necronomicon. So the way this works is we got to spend six power, and we'll place it. Place, we place the Necronomicon token at Miskatonic University, which is over here. When you or a zealot is played or moves to the university, or he or she is already there, attach the Necronomicon token to the zealot or you. Uh, the zealot or you gets plus three strength, and then this part I forgot to get rid of. And if the zealot not discard or remove, yeah, so uh, this is just, uh, I meant to scratch that off. Basically, what it, what it, what it means is uh, if 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 I have the Necronomicon, or or a zealot has the Necronomicon, we get plus three strength, and if we get defeated in combat, we just drop the token there. Uh, it's not, in other words, it's not. I don't have to get it back from the deck. I, it's once it's played, it's played. It's out on the board, uh, and it, it's just dropped if we get defeated. But anyways, let's let's keep moving. So um, so we we drew our hand. Now we'll move these guys. draw from the deck new lead so that means there everyone's going to move one extra space and then we put a yellow guy in the cemetery a yellow investigator okay All right, we increase our uh, power by two. Now we're gonna go one, two, three. So one, two, three, to bring this second relic. So we have two of the three relics. Uh, we can we have one more thing that we can do, and I don't want to spend any power because. Uh, well, you know what? When I'm at the ritual site, I can gain a power for free. So I'm going to go to five. Uh, I can spend it for my hand or because I'm at the ritual site. See, the ritual site is really good. You can gain one power or draw an extra card. Or you can spend an action and one power to... Um, well, in addition to that, uh, you can spend an action and one power to uh, summon a zealot. And you can only summon three zealots there throughout the whole game. We did it in the first turn. We're going to do it now as, a, as the second time out of three. And we're going to put him here to kind of guard that area. We have him guarding this area, them guarding that area. Okay. So that was our fourth action, and that cost us one. I think I, uh, yeah, so we're back to four. All right, so that's the end of our turn. We have four cards, so we uh, don't uh, we don't draw back or anything. So we'll move everyone. So you're going to go there, there, there. In there okay 
Now we'll draw here. The uh, Femme Fatale. So we play her to the hotel. And then uh, this one I had to uh, change up a lot. So I say we're played. All zealots are swamped out, but there was never really enough zealots. So now I just said, if wherever there's one, at least one zealot, you just swap it out with uh, an investigator. So there's a zealot here, which sucks. I'm going to swap it out with an investigator. So that sucks. That was a waste. And then we put uh, uh, another yellow guy in the mansion. So you see these... these investigators they're easy to defeat but they really get out of control if you don't keep them down so uh that's there okay so back to our turn so we have six where is it so we have six power we are going to spend it all to bring out the necronomicon which is here we got a little token which is a little book we're going to put it at the university. So now we got to go there and get it. And we still need to get one more relic. Um, next, uh, let's see. I have another zealot. Uh, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play that zealot. No, I, uh, I can't because I have zero. Uh, oh, but I'm at this place. So I'm going to gain one strength from the ritual site. I'm going to spend it. Uh, and you know, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna use the card. I'm gonna do the third and final ability of the ritual site to play a zealot here. And I'm gonna. Uh, so that was the second. Act. First action was the Necronomicon. Second action, summon the um, zealot. Third action, I'm gonna start a fight. Uh, and while uh, we're at the grove, uh, he gets plus one strength, so he's able to defeat that investigator. So that was uh, third action. Fourth action, going to move him there. That ends our actions, starts an automatic fight because he's sharing a space. Gets rid of him because uh, he also gets plus one strength there. So he's a two while this yellow guy's a one. Okay, so that ends that turn. Everyone's going to move. Um, he's going to stay there. He's going to go there. Move. 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 And now let's draw the detective we play him to city hall he's a red guy a red investigator play him to city hall and uh, we remove an item uh, uh, from the closest enemy no one none of his enemies has an item except me so we just remove my dagger so I go back down to two strength instead of three uh, and then we play um, a yellow investigator to the docks Okay, so we can get rid of that. All right, back to our turn. Oh, we should have drawn a card. So we have a curse, a zealot, a red herring, and a dagger. Okay, so I definitely need to get rid of some of these guys and find that last uh, relic and get the, the uh, Necronomicon. So let's see what we want to do. I think we're gonna have to defeat these guys. Um, we're gonna give myself a dagger. So we we have we we have two power, but because we're here, we're gonna use that ritual sight bonus to give us uh, that extra power. So we have three total. We're gonna use we're gonna spend one to give ourselves a dagger again, so that we have three strength total. Okay. Let's see. He can move two. I would just get him here. Um, let's see. I'm going to move him here. So that was the first action. Second action, move him. He can move two locations, basically jumping over the first one. And he's going to attack these two. So it's two versus four, so we're able to easily wipe those out. Okay. But now he only has uh, two strength left, so he can't come over here and now wipe these guys out. Uh, or over here and wipe this guy out, because then he'll die also. 
So he he only has two strength or health left after that fight. Um, but at the end of my turn, he'll regain it. So if they move there, they would die. Um, let's see. Uh, I want to now get out of here. Um, let's see. So that was... What did I do? So I put a dagger moved, attacked, so I have one more action I can do. Um, let's play a zealot with a card, not because we can't do the ritual site anymore, we did three, so we're going to do the card, and we're going to put this uh, zealot uh, here, at the grotto. Okay, so those are our four actions, uh, there, everyone's going to move. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Now we'll do this. Uh, the psychic. Oh, wait. So I need to draw two before I do the, the psychic's ability. Ooh, the portal. Good, good. So I'll redo the portal. Uh, it costs four to play, and it's the portal of hideous madness. So there's two hideous madness cards. The ritual of hideous madness and the portal of hideous madness. If I play the portal for four, I just place it down here and I can use it as like a extra uh, card or action. And it, I have to spend two actions. And if I do, I can put in my hand a card from the discard pile at its cost. Uh, it used to be I can play it from the discard pile at its cost, but I found that was too easy. So to put, make it harder, I said I can put in my hand at its cost and I would have to use its cost again to play it. And it take another action to do so. So that's why that revision is there. So, um... Okay, so now I'm, I'm going to do the this ability of the Psychic and discard the top four of the uh, Cultist deck. Two, three, four. Uh, and uh, she, uh, the Psychic is played to the Cemetery. And the uh, bonus, uh, or the, the yellow in Investigator is played to the Hospital. Okay, so that's it for that. Okay, back to our turn. Gonna get two power plus a bonus from being at the ritual site. So we have four total. Uh, let's see. Let's give a dagger to this zealot. So this zealot now has two, but when he's at these locations here, these uh, six locations, the uh, all the uh, all of my team basically gets plus one strength to each. So he has one on his own, plus one for the dagger, plus one for the, these locations. So he has a he's a three strength uh, ally. So that was one action playing the dagger. Second action, going to move him here. Third action is uh, fight this guy off. Um, so that's third. I have one more action I can do, and that cost me one power to do that. Uh, let's see. Let's move this guy here, one, two, to get rid of these two here. So that's a three strength, one, two, and three out of this four. So this guy has one more strength or health left, so he's just going to not do anything anymore. Um... Uh, Okay, so let's see, so I did, I played a dagger, I moved, I, fo I fought, and moved again, and fought, so I did an extra action, oh wait, but I ended that turn there, he was able to, yeah, right, so I did, the fourth action was moving him here, I ended my, that ends the turn, but that starts an automatic fight, because he ended his turn, or he, at the end of my turn, he was left at a place with enemies. So that's how you get that, that free uh, fight action. So all right, we'll draw back up to four. Uh, the familiar. Um, so when I play or, let me say, oh, when I start in or move to the familiar's location, I can perform two extra actions and I can, uh, whenever I play an ally, I can put him at a range of zero to one. Um, cost two and he has a strength of one. Okay, so now we'll move everyone 
So he's not going to move here because he would just die. So he's going to stay there. He's going to come there, come there. So now there's enough to, when they want to move, they can't now, but when they would, they would move there and be able to kill everyone there. Move there. Now let's see what card we draw from their deck. Uh, another detective. So uh, we play him to the city hall. Uh, the other guy to the docks. And then the ability of the detective is to remove an item from the strongest uh, person on my team with an item, which is me at the moment. So he's going to take my dagger away. He's going to conf confiscate my dagger. So he's out. Okay, back to our turn. So I don't want to move him there because he'll just die. Uh, but I might not have a choice. And I want to get out of here so I can get the relics in the in the Necronomicon. So let's get out. So we're going to go one, two, three. And I want to move him so that he's not attacked by these guys. Um... Four. Move him here so that he has a plus one and he, he has uh, company with that zealot. Okay. Um, we should be at a five now. Okay. All right. Let's uh, now we'll uh, do the enemy team. So they're going to go there. He's going to go there. He's going to go there. So we have two kind of pretty sizable groups. He's going to go there. All right, let's see what happens. Uh, revolver, place a revolver with an investigator against plus one strength. So we're gonna give it to uh, this guy because that would be giving them the biggest advantage. And they're closer, Te technically they're the same strength, but uh, he's closer so he, they get the gun, the revolver. Okay, oh, and uh, we add someone to the cemetery. We add our yellow guy. To the cemetery okay all right getting a little tough here um we're gonna go to the sewers oh wait we gained two but we have a max of six uh power that we can get so we're at our limit of six um i guess we can do if we do the portal i don't think I want to do the portal. Uh, I might be able to, let, let's see how far we can go and maybe we'll do the portal. All right, so I'm going to, first off, I'm going to go here as my first action. Second action, I'm going to spend one power to curse and I'm going to do, uh, uh, so it, this should say uh, do two damage to one location. Uh, so I'm going to do two damage here, one, two, I could not defeat the, uh, the yellow, the, the red one has two, but with the, uh, revolver, he has three, so, the, uh, a curse would not defeat him. Um, okay, so that was one, no, no, that was, uh, I moved, I cursed, I gotta get rid of the card, so I moved, I cursed, I'm gonna move again. So move, curse, move. Um, I'm going to go to the university as my fourth action. And I don't have the Necronomicon yet. I have to attach it with an action. So I don't have it yet. Okay. So we'll draw back up to four. Uh, con uh, convert. All right, we haven't seen this one yet. Uh, so it's uh, uh, it costs two to play, a range of zero to one. And we basically convert an, uh, an ins uh, investigator. We switch it out with one zealot. And for example, if it was a red one with a revolver, it would you would discard the revolver token and just place a normal zealot there with one. It's a one strength zealot, so it doesn't matter what how much strength the uh, investigator had. Okay, so now everything moves. So let's see, one, two, three, four, or one, two, three. So everything is going to want to go towards me now. So he won't go towards me because I have two strength, he has one. So he's going to wait for stuff to get build up. So they're going to go there. He's going to go there. And he's going to go there. 
Let's see now. New lead, which is really bad. Because I'm going to be defeated. Okay. And we put someone at the hotel. So that doesn't end the game. Uh, defeated is like a keyword. Uh, hotel there. Okay. So when uh, the cultist is defeated, you know, air quotes defeated. Um, by the way, we do damage to them too. So we have two strength. We are able to defeat one of the red ones. So when the cultist is defeated, you have to discard your whole hand. You get, uh, you lose all your power. Uh, and you lose all your items. Now remember, I didn't attach it. And if I, if I had it on, I would just drop it at the location. Uh, but if, if I had a dagger, I would discard the dagger. Um, and you respawn at the hospital. That's the hospital's ability. The hospital's ability is you respawn there. Only the cultist respawns. No, nothing else respawns. Only the cultist. That way there's no player elimination. Um, so if you're playing with more than one cultist, cooperatively, you know, if, if you get defeated, you don't, you're not eliminated. You just respawn there. Uh, and, uh, but you don't want to stay there because enemies have plus one strength when they're at the hospital. So you want to, when you respawn there, you want to maybe search and get out. Okay. So, um, we're in a bit of a pickle. So now, now it's our turn because we already did the hotel and moved everything. So we have two, uh, power. We're in a bit of a pickle because we only have two strength and there's three strength worth of enemies at where the book is, the Necronomicon. So why don't we use this opportunity to uh, investigate the uh, hospital. Okay, so this is the first time we get this. It is an item. So when we get an item, we draw from this deck over here. That's been off to the corner we haven't used yet because we haven't found an item. So we found an item and it's a, we get like a special magical item that automatically uh, attaches to us. We don't need to spend an action to attach it. Let's see what we got. Okay, the glove with six fingers. We can increase our hand size by plus one. So, um, oh, and one hand, so, but, so there's different types of items. This is one of the items you can put in your hand. So if you find multiple items, you, you can put one for your head, one for your feet, and you get one for each hand, or and there's some items that are, are two hands, so you can only have one of them for your hand. So this is a glove, just one glove with six fingers. We can increase our hand size plus one. So we'll just put that there so we know. We just hold on to it. Okay, so that was one action. Let's see. Two. Oh, this should be discarded. Let's see, where was I? Here. Um... See, if I move there and flip it, then they can move there and defeat me again. Uh, maybe we want to get this guy out. So that was one, two, three, uh, four. We'll put him here with us. Okay. All right, so we'll end the turn there. Uh, convert, and now we uh, shuffle... Uh, this back to form the cultist deck because we ran out so we just shuffle it to form the deck again now that one you don't shuffle once it runs out you lose Okay, I think that's good enough. And we need uh, three more cards to get, get back up to four. One, two, three. All right. So we have a curse, a zealot, a dagger, and convert. Okay, so now we do their turn. They're going to move closer to us. They're going to move closer to the ritual site. And he's going to move there. Okay. So now let's see what we get. New lead. So everything's going to move closer to the uh, ritual site. And uh, plus one at the theater. Which is over here. It's kind of blocked. Okay. So that was that. Okay. Alright. We need to... 
get rid of some of these guys. Oh, I think we have a curse. And we have a convert. Okay. And a dagger and a zealot. Okay. So we're going to increase power to f by two. So we have four. Uh, I think we need to get rid of some of these guys. Because they're going to start uh, getting pretty strong. Uh, or they're going to get out of control if we don't wipe some of them out. So we're going to move this guy here as one. Um, one action, two action, or second action to uh, defeat both of them. Uh, third action. Um, let's see. We gotta we gotta take care of this so they'll wipe this guy out. Uh we're gonna uh spend two to convert uh the red one. And then we'll spend uh so let's see, we, we moved, we fought, we converted. Now we're gonna put a dagger on the green guy on our our um zealot. So now he has two strength against so one strength each over here, so he'll be able to take care of both of them. Okay. So that's our whole turn. We we did that just to basically uh, manage the map. When you draw a card that you can't use because the Necronomicon's already out, you just discard and replace it. Okay. All right. Uh, so now we move everything. So they they die. Because uh, at the end of my turn, it was an automatic fight because they're enemies together. So he is one, two strength against one, two strength. So they wipe each other out. Oops. He's going to move. All right. Uh, now we'll draw a card. Uh, the priest. Okay, so all... Non-zealot allies in play are removed and uh, their cards discard. Use, I used to have the cards like still out. You, I guess you can still do that, but I don't. But basically, all non-zealot uh, allies, such as um, the Night Gaunt, are, remo are, are defeated, basically. The priest is played to the church. And um, we have a guy, uh, a yellow guy, played to the forest. Over here. Okay. And I forgot, uh, because of the glove with six fingers, I can ha my hand limit is five now. Okay, cool. So I have two uh, curses. Red herring, a bewitch. A zone. Okay. Alright. Back to my turn. Go up by two power. We got to get that. So one, two... Uh, let's, uh, I think we're going to go, we'll, we'll attach it to us so that we'll get the strength benefit from it. So three, and then four, we'll move to the power plant because I need to search these areas to see where that last relic is. So hopefully it's there. So that was our four, uh, actions. Couldn't play anything. So now everything moves. Um. So he's going to stay. He's going to go towards me. He's also going to go towards me. Okay. Another priest. So uh, basically played to the church and um, to the forest. So the priest is played to the church. And the yellow guy is played to the forest. Okay, back to my turn. Uh, let's see, do I want to curse that guy? Well, let, let's see what this is. So we'll flip it. It's another item, so it's not the relic, the last relic. Uh, boots of teleportation. Discard boots of teleportation to move to any location for free. So that's really good. 
because right now I'm kind of trapped by this guy, but it's not the biggest deal because I can use, I can just uh, defeat him with a zealot. And I think that's what I'll do. So that the first action was searching. Second action is we're gonna put a zealot there for one power and they'll just wipe each other out. Um, I'm going to, oh man, I don't want to, I don't want to use the boots right away, because if I can find, you know what, I shouldn't have played that zealot, but I'm not going to take it back, I'm going to move here, uh, as my, what, third action, because we search, played a zealot, we're moving, uh, we now we have to fight because uh, we can't move without fighting uh, there. So we're we're just gonna fight him. So at least the zealot stays around. Um, okay. All right. So we'll just end that turn there. We played a card so we can draw. I mean, it wasn't the worst thing to play that zealot. At least we have a buddy out there. Okay. So now let's move everything. So we're gonna move him. No, no, he's not gonna move there because he would just be killed. So he's going to move there. These guys can now move here, but actually I don't think they want to do that because they would also just die because he has two strengths, one, two. Oops. He has one in his own plus one there. So they're going to want to build up more. So we'll just stay there. Okay, so nothing nothing happens yet with regard to movement. Okay, the apostate. Uh, so he has played to the university, which sucks for him because he's just going to be killed off because... Uh, because uh, if you remember, I have the Necronomicon, it gives you plus three strength, so I have two to begin with, two plus uh, three is five, so um, he's just going to be summoned there and die right off. And then we play another one to the mountains, which is over here. Uh, now, with the uh, Apostate, uh, I, I had to work this one out uh, too, but the, when the Apostate is summoned... You put the uh, this eyeball token at the sewers. Now, uh, all enemies are able to move into and through the sewers. Basically, the, the apostate told them of our, uh, about our secret hideout. Okay, so now it's our turn. Uh, we're going to move and search another item let's see ring of uh resurrection when you are defeated discard ring of resurrection you keep your hand in all other items you may stay at your current location or go to the hospital and it is also one hand so because we have a, the gloves is one hand and the ring is one hand we're able to have both and the boots of course go on our feet and then if we could ha we have room for one more item for our head it'll be like the hood of something or the crown of something etc Okay, so uh, we moved, we searched, we're going to uh, move and search again uh, at the docks. And we have four strength, uh, or four uh, power, because of the gain two every turn. I just keep forgetting to do it. So we're going to move and search to the docks, and it is another item. So we're having trouble finding that last relic. Okay, let's see what item we get now. Boots of Bouncing. Uh, once per turn, you can skip one or two locations while moving. So, do I want to keep the boots of teleportation, or do I want to get the boots of bouncing? Because the boots of bouncing, you don't discard, but the boots of teleportation, you got to discard it when you use it. Huh. Skip one or two. So, you can skip one or skip two locations. You know, i got to tell you, I think I'm, I want the boots of bouncing. So, I'm going to discard the boots of teleportation, keep the boots of bouncing. And put that there. Okay, so with that, those are our four uh, actions. We moved and searched, moved and searched. Can't find that last relic. It's going to be one of these four, so we're almost there. Um, so now we do the movement. Uh, this They're not going to move because they don't have enough strength to survive, so he's going to move there. Uh, they are going they they want to move here but they they have four strength total i have five strength 
so they're not going to move yet they're waiting to build up strength like they were so now we're going to draw the femme fatale okay so she gets played to the hotel which is where we want to go Uh, we play a yellow guy to the mansion, and she converts one of our um, uh, zealots. It's going to be that one. Because uh, I should write on here, it should be whichever one is closest to her, because it just makes more sense. Like, she's converting or deconverting someone is basically is the idea behind this card. So, oh, what am I doing? I need, I need to replace him with a yellow investigator. Like, she she made the zealot fall in love with her, and now he converted to be with her, I guess. Okay. So, um... So that's the end of their turn. Okay. I have enough curses to get rid of these two. I think I'm gonna do that. So, I go, I go up to six now. And I'm gonna spend two to curse. And remember, each curse is two damage. One, two, because they each are two strengths. So one, two, one, two gets rid of both of them. So I'm down to uh, four because each curse costs one uh, power. All right, uh, so that was two actions because two cards, two actions. And I'm going to move and I'm going to search. Come on, Relic. No, okay, this is bad. It is draw an investigator card. All right, let's see the magician. Uh, so the cultist loses all power, so I go down to zero. So, but I'm still here with the femme fatale. Uh, play him to the theater, and uh, play someone to the farms. Okay. All right, I have uh, three cards, so I draw back up to, uh, to five because I have the glove of six fingers, two daggers, and a zealot, red herring, and a bewitch. Okay. All right, uh, so now uh, automatic fight. We win because we have five strength against the uh, femme fatale's two strength. Okay. Um, they want to move there, but they're not going to. They want to wait till there's enough people. He's going to move there. He's going to move there. I guess he'll move there to increase that strength up. Um, they'll move there, and they're going to move here. They have enough strength to wipe out that guy. And survive. And now I'm gonna, i got to worry about that guy getting in here, because if he gets in, I lose. So at least I have this guy here. He's kind of defending this spot, but maybe I should move him in there or there or even there to get rid of that guy. Okay. All right. Back to our turn. We have uh, two power. Um, let's see. So let's see. There are one, two, three, four. I have five. Let's get rid of these guys. So we're going to move one, attack two. Our, our second action is to attack. Third action is move uh, here. And fourth action is we're going to search. All right, finally, we got that last, uh, that last relic. Uh, the only problem now is that we can't carry both the relic and the Necronomicon. So what we're going to do is we're going to get that Necronomicon back here and then come back and get the relic, and then back. And we have the boots of bouncing, so hopefully that'll be faster. Okay, so let's um, let's uh, move everyone. So he's going to move there. Uh-oh. If we draw a new lead card, we lose. Okay, revolver. Not bad. We're going to put the revolver on him, so he'll be harder to prevent from getting in there. Uh, and then we play so someone to the theater. Okay. All right, that was scary. Okay. Can we move there? One, 
No, we can't. If we go there, we have to stop. The mountains, we have to stop. Oh, but we have the boots of bouncing. But either way, we can go here. So, and we can jump two locations. So, one, two, three. And then we can defeat him for four. Okay, so we're going to do that. We're going to use the boots of bouncing to jump two spaces. So we're going to jump over here. We have the Necronomicon with us. Um, and we should have four power. So we use the boot. We can only do that once uh, per turn. So now we have to move normally. So that was that was one action. Second action. Third action is we're going to fight. This guy only has two strength with the gun, the revolver. That was a close one, though, because if we drew a new lead, he would have gotten in there and we would have lost. So that was the third action. Fourth action, we brought the ne Necronomicon there. So we end the turn there. Five cards, so we don't draw. We're going to move. They can now move into the sewers so that it's faster for them to get to uh, the ritual site. And we can't hide there anymore. Uh, the apostate. So there's two apostates. That's why it's more likely for them to find the sewers uh, even early on. Uh, but because we already did that, so it's not, it, it, the apostate doesn't do anything extra now. So he goes to the university and he plays someone to the mountains. Okay. All right. So we stop the boots of bouncing, and we have zealots and daggers. Um, I'm gonna spend. So we have six now. We're gonna spend. Uh, and uh, we could gain one more, but we can't go above six. So we're gonna spend one to go down to five to play a zealot, and we're gonna put him at the grove because that was a little too risky for me before. Uh, and we're gonna spend another one. Put him with a dagger. Uh, let's see. We're gonna go so that so one, two, three, and uh, four is we're gonna give ourselves a dagger because now we don't have the Necronomicon, so we're weaker than before. Oops. Okay. All right. Let's uh, get back up to five because we have the uh, glove of six fingers. So we have three bewitches, a, a convert, and a red herring. Okay. They're going to move. Um, now we'll draw. Oh, we are really close to losing, just realized. Uh, revolver. So we're going to give a revolver to the red guy, because he's the strongest. So he gets it. Okay. Uh, and someone's played to the power plant. The yellow guy has played to the power plant. Okay. All right, we have to use our boots of bouncing. Thank goodness we have that. So let's see what we can do. We can skip two locations, so we go there. So we're going to do that. Skip uh, two locations. One, two. To go here. Um, we have five strength now, because we gain, we gain strength. Um, so that was one action. Two action. Third action is to grab it. Okay, fourth action. Fourth action. Thing is, if we move there, oh, even if we stay there, we don't want to stay there either because that guy can kill us, even though we have the Ring of Resurrection. I mean, do we really want to. Hmm. Convert. Things we need to get there because we, well, we you know we probably could because we we draw that card we 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 end we we lose when we can't draw cards anymore, um, so we do have one turn after this one so okay so it's not it's not that bad, okay so 
let's see. We already bounced. We can't bounce again. Um, I can convert. That's not really useful. Bewitch. I could bewitch them, but again, that's not not as useful. Uh, let's see. So I think what we'll do is we'll just move here as our fourth four. Okay. So let's see. Do we have five cards? Um. So they're gonna move there. They're gonna move there with the gun. Um. Let's see. I have one, two, three. So they would. These two would have moved here. No, no, because I have three. They're only two, so they don't move. Okay. Okay. All right, so now let's draw the last card. The thief. So I have to discard my whole hand. Uh, put a yellow guy at the mines, which is where we're at. We have more strength than him, so he just dies. And to the, he, the thief gets played to the power plant. He should have moved. Okay. All right, so this is the last turn. Um because we can't draw anymore, so this is it. We have the boots of bouncing, so we're gonna use them to bounce out over two locations. So that's one, two, so we'll end up here. Oh, we gain, so we have six, because we can't go more than that. So we bounce over there, and it's one action. And then second action, we'll move in here. And there we go, we won. We got all three relics and the Necronomicon. Uh, to the ritual site. So there we go. We won at the very last possible turn because we ran out of uh, investigator cards. And uh, we almost had uh, someone come into the ritual site, almost lost there. And I think the only re reason we won is because we got some items to help us along the way. Uh, so there you have it. That is my uh, work in progress uh, design uh, game called uh, Hideous Madness. And uh, it is now time to recite the litany of the meme. The night is dark and full of terrors, but I know that we will live long and prosper, for the force will be with us always against the forces of he who must not be named, as we remember to keep it secret, keep it safe, until the day we assemble in the name of Muad'Dib. So, say, we all. <laughs>